there guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Yay! <laughs> so for today's revision video I am focusing on the big three and that is maths revision, English revision and science revision. And I was thinking about this, I actually take English, maths and two sciences for my A-levels so I'm here to help you guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting right into this because I feel like it might be a long one. Maths revision. Now, maths I find notoriously difficult to rise for. And that is because with maths you need to understand it. It's very much about needing to do practice questions in, in order to like understand how to do the content. Like you can read through like a problem and be like, oh yeah, I understand it. But the real question is, can you do it yourself if you're presented with a similar question? I also just wanted to say, I have done some research into the new maths GCSE, like the one to nine system, and oh my god, I know it looks awful, and I know so many schools across the country are really struggling to get good grades in the new maths GCSE, which is why I think it's even more important for you guys that you are focusing a bit more on your maths revision. So the first obvious one is to learn the formulas because I mean I got a formula sheet but you don't <laughs> um, and at A level you don't get loads of them either so the best way I would recommend to learn the formulas is two main ways the first way is post-it notes so put them on post-it notes and put them everywhere around your room if you want to get more adventurous put them around your house as well equally as well as post-it notes you can put them on flashcards like or just formulas on flashcards like right close up to the exam just get someone to test you like boom 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 what is the formula for this what is the formula for that because you need to know them at the end of the day and then the second method to learn the formulas is from my previous video um, on how to like remember anything and that is to assign a formula to an object in your house or an object in your pencil case in the exam or your fingers or anything. Just make sure that you've got them in your head and ready. So another learning tip is to use flashcards just in general for maths. I didn't do this so much at GCSE, but I kind of wish I had done because I do it now for A level and it's a lot more useful. So let me show you some of my notes. Right, so the key fact is with, with making maths flashcards, is that on the flashcards is that you write like formulas and everything, uh, quite condensed, um, but the main thing is, is you need to write examples. So after every chapter of flashcards, um, I have just written out a load of different examples, of different styles of questions I've seen. These can be from a textbook, from online resources, anything. Just basically put them onto your flashcards so that when you're doing some quick revision of the flashcards, you're not just looking at the information, your brain can work through a problem at the same time. And you also learn the repeated style of questions. So I would recommend going over your flashcards loads of times, whether it's just before bed, reading them over again, or before you go and do a test, just go through them again. You need to have gone through them like 50 times before your exams. Okay, so then once you've got your content down, the main thing I can say for maths, and you're probably gonna like hate me for saying this, is you need to do practice questions. Yeah. I know they're boring. I hate practice questions so much, but they are the only way that you are really going to get to grips with the content of maths and be ready for doing the exam. Because even if you've learned a formula, you can't actually like apply the formula if you've never done a question before. If you're doing the new spec, just use online resources like Maths Genie or My Maths, or I had the Maths Watch Disc when I did my GCSEs and I found it really helpful. Like there are so many online resources, I promise you, if you just have a look. Okay, and here is a really important bit now. So you're doing practice questions, yeah? and you mark it through yourself, you need to figure out why you are going wrong, yeah? So when you get an answer wrong, you need to ask yourself, is it because you don't understand it? Because if you don't understand it, you can take different action to understand the content. Is it because you understand the question, you just were so off in your method, and therefore you maybe need to relearn the formulas, or you just need to do more practice questions? Or is it the issue of you've just made a silly mistake and you can probably correct it in the future? So those are three sort of situations and if it's a silly mistake, I'd pretty much say ignore it but do some more practice questions that are similar. If it's an understanding issue, then you need to go back to your flashcards. You could potentially go and see a teacher but get on your online resources and all that sort of thing. If it's an issue of either understanding or the method, then I would highly recommend that you write down the question again and you put it in your flashcards. 
so that when you're going through your flashcards again and you're going through like example example questions you can look at one that you know that you previously got wrong and hopefully now like you'll have it right because if you've pinpointed all your weaknesses within maths you'll eventually cover everything and be way better at it <laughs> but yeah with maths please just do your practice questions just keep doing them and the day of the exam right like in the morning you need to do some maths questions okay to prepare you need to get your brain into the maths zone and it's easy to say that you know the content but if you're actually doing some maths just before the exam i promise you that is the best way that you can do well okay so i'm trying to go quick if you hadn't noticed and now we're on to english so I do English Lit at A level and I love English. I sometimes find it really difficult and I need to be in the right frame of mind to write an essay, like a good essay. And I would like to do a video soon on how to write a good, decent essay and what you should include. And I've also been doing some research into the new GCSE spec because I'm just amazing and I wanna help you. And I know a lot of people are quite terrified because of the new spec. It is definitely a lot more marks that you have to get and like more papers and more questions. But I was looking at it and it's definitely doable. Like now that I'm at A level, I look back at that like, yeah, okay, that is doable. So if you're not already, get really familiar with the command words of the question. So like describe or explain or persuade or all those sorts of things. Just get really familiar with what they are exactly asking you to do. And equally become very familiar with the different forms of writing that you can have. So for example, in the creative writing aspect of the English language paper, you might be asked to write a blog post or a letter or a newspaper article for a broadsheet or something and you need to be really familiar with the conventions of each so whether that means you need to go away and research it or you need to read more like articles in newspapers like that's the most boring thing ever but even just just before your exam just read the newspaper just quickly like get in the frame of mind also it's good to come up with creative writing questions for yourself like they're always on sort of really similar topics. I'm sure you can come up with some creative writing questions for yourself. Like, oh, let's write a letter to the council about getting more healthy food in children's schools. Like that's so boring, but that kind of thing comes up. And when you're writing these creative writings, you need to have a mental list prepared in your head. So you need to think, right, I need to tick off personification and alliteration and a metaphor and a simile and all these like literary devices that you know you're going to need to put in to get marks um maybe come up with like a word bank like almost like a literary definition dictionary which you could really quickly skim over and just remind yourself of all the language devices that people potentially use i also highly recommend becoming familiar with like word types because examiners love it rather than commenting on the obvious alliteration if you can comment on the use of an imperative like i shall or you must, like all modal verbs like that, like could, should, would, or equally if you can comment on like possessive pronouns like her, which would show like dominance and control over them as though they're objectifying it, or I don't even know. Just get familiar with, with the little word types and what they could mean, because that's more original and the examiners like originality. Okay, so this is more of like a lit thing. For English lit, skim read your book again, skim read your texts, and every time a quote just sort of jumps out at you and you think, right, that's a good quote, I have something to say on that, bookmark it, highlight it, anything, just make sure you're going to come back to it in a second. So keep skim reading, anything, anything that sticks out to you, highlight it. Then, when you've done that for like 10 minutes or something, get a piece of paper and I want you to write out all the quotes that you've highlighted and then I, underneath I want you to write like a paragraph about that quote. So something that you can say about it. Like, oh my god, the quote, binding with briars uses alliteration to make it more memorable as it's at the end of the paragraph and it uses plosive B sounds to create harsh negative imagery. Bam. Just basically, with your quotes, write something about it. And it'll become very apparent very quickly if you can write something about it or not. And if you can, save that quote and add it to your list of the ones that you're going to learn because I'm assuming you don't have the text in the exam room. And if you can't say a lot about the, the quote, just leave it, move on. You have a whole book of potential quotes and then when you've chosen these quotes again make a word list write them up in huge these quotes make like a visually appealing poster put it on your wall and i want you to look at it every day when you are brushing your teeth
I normally don't use posters a lot, apart from really in English, because I find it's quite creative at the end of the day, and a lot of the time you are just winging it anyway. <laughs> um, so posters are quite good to just quickly, really quickly, visually remind yourself of so much that goes on in the book. For example, on my wall I have a poster on Othello, which I'm studying right now at A-level, and I just have some quick facts about like context, alternative interpretations and dates that I should learn to make myself sound knowledgeable on it. And I put some little photos because I'm a visual learner. So in the exam, I can just recall the photos and therefore recall the facts. So with English, write practice essays, get so good with your vocabulary that the examiner's just amazed with your sophistication. Like learn some cool literary devices that no one really ever uses. And I'll talk more about this in my how to write a good essay video, but yeah. Also, practice writing to time, I forgot to say, just keep track of the time because it runs away from you in English. And on to science revision. I do biology and chemistry at A-level, aka death, really difficult, hard subjects, which I might fail, who knows? Um, and science is so difficult in that it is both heavily content-based, like there's so much to learn, but also the fact that it can be really difficult to understand. So you need to kind of tackle the two aspects as well as then getting the specific points on the mark scheme that they always want. Right, so I personally find flashcards the best way to learn the content in science, like in bulk. There's so much that you might as well just quickly have flashcards. However, the catch is, make sure that they are so heavily summarised that when you look at them, there might be only like five words on a flashcard or like a drawing or something. Let me show you like an example for biology. So biology A-level is the most content in a subject I think I have ever come across. It's really hard. Right, so here's something random. So this is on atrial systole in um, like heart contraction. So I put A contract, which is like atria. And then I put an arrow and an ER like higher in the, what does that say? Like higher in the atria and then AV for atrioventricular valves open. So just really summarise, I can look at that, and the thing is, I have to fill in the gaps, which is the issue, because then I have to know it, if you know what I mean. Okay, and like I said in my other video, another amazing way to learn stuff is the assigning of objects um, to words and phrases that you need to learn in the mark scheme. You will never run out of objects, let me tell you now. You will, there will always be something, whether it's learning it based on your fingernail, or the side of your door frame, or the rooms in your house, and you're imagining walking into one room is going to tell you a phrase or a sequence of steps or something. As long as you take the time to properly learn what you've assigned stuff to, it's fine, it's unlimited. So because science is so knowledge-based as well as application-based, I like to make up really simple, quick knowledge questions from my flashcards and my notes. So for example, Every single chapter of A-level biology, I will make a really quick sheet of just quick questions. For example, what is the name of a bond that joins um, a glycerol molecule to a fatty acid? Really quick, completely knowledge based, just to see have I taken it in from my flashcards and can I answer it there and then? And if not, then I need to go back to the whole learning stage. Also, with learning science, because there's so much content and it can be quite a lot, it's so important to revise in really small chunks with science. So take a chapter, don't try and do the whole of P1 physics. So focus on a chapter, make sure you really fully understand the chapter, do your flashcards, do your practice questions. Also, here's a really handy tip. In the day, do your learning and your main revision and understanding, and then just like have a break, live your life. And then just before you go to sleep, get out your flashcards. I want you to just read through the notes of whatever you learned that day. And when I say read through them, are you kidding? The towel garden just turned on. Right, let me turn it off. Um, and when I say read through them, I mean, don't learn them. Don't try and like sit there understanding them. Just literally read through them because this is just a last opportunity for your brain to just take it in and go over what you've already made an effort to understand. Okay, so you've learned stuff in science, great. Now is the really super important part. Do you fully understand it and can you apply it? And guess what, do you know how you test that? You do your practice questions. Ah, You can always find practice questions online or in textbooks or in CGP revision guides, 
just make sure you do a range of them and go through heavily with the mark scheme, write out the proper, proper mark scheme answers. And like with maths, I need you to reword those mark scheme answers into your notes. That is the most crucial thing out of anything you take from this, from this video. The most crucial thing is just literally rewording the mark scheme into the notes that you learn. Because if you don't learn the things that they want, then you can know it all, but just not say it in the right words. And that is the, such a frustrating thing with science, especially A-level biology, is you can know it all and just not get the specific words that they want. So make sure you practice and make sure that you are going over those in future by putting them into your notes. But here's another thing which takes a lot of time and effort but is the most useful thing in the world. For each chapter of science, I want you to go through all the existing mark schemes, even of other specs, even of past specs, and I want you to find all the questions that are relevant to that chapter and lump them all together on a Word document, print them all off, print off all the mark schemes, and then go through and highlight all the similarities between the questions because those are the things that always get asked and that is so crucial to science. The other day we did it in biology and our lovely teacher printed off all the biology mark scheme questions for that chapter that we were doing so we could see exactly what always came up and what we needed to learn. Even though we're doing a new spec, it hasn't changed that much, like honestly. I also highly recommend online resources. For example, I purchased the My GCSE Science I found it so helpful to understand the com content. He pretty much does it for you in that he has practice questions for each chapter already there. Also GCSE Bite Size is not a bad website. It just basically depends on how you learn. Another really good one is to teach someone else the thing that you've recently understood. It really tests whether you understand it and it will quickly show gaps in your knowledge. So it's actually really interesting to try and teach someone like in your class who has a base knowledge of it or to teach someone who has no knowledge of, of it, like, for example, my brother. I taught him some random things from chemistry last year, just because, and it definitely proves that you understand it if you can do that. Basically, what I want to hammer home to you guys is that there is no quick fix, yeah? Some of you have been commenting things like, hi, I was just wondering if you could tell me, like, your secret tip to get A stars, or, like, the thing that, you know, the thing that just got it for you and that doesn't happen I didn't just get them you know what I mean I had to do the boring slog of revision and past papers and stuff like that and unfortunately you do too and it's so time consuming and it's so boring I understand but just ask yourself do you want to do well keep working hard I know you can do it you know you can do it just keep putting in the work yeah i personally don't find writing flashcards is revision i feel like that's just kind of something you have to almost have done in advance because learning the flashcards is what you need to be doing at this stage but hey ho if you're still writing them i mean some people find writing them is better learning than like reading them also bonus thing music don't you dare listen to some really wordy music like pop music or something while you're doing your revision because it's really proven that it just doesn't go in as much, especially if you're sat there singing to it, which I've done many times. The best thing you can do is work in silence, especially because it mirrors the exam room, or to listen to classical music. And I'm just gonna throw this out there because it's my favorite album ever. There's an album called Carpa Lumen and it's on Spotify and I listen to it before I go to bed, when I wake up, when I do homework, and I just love it. I just love the songs on there so, so much. So hit that up if you wanna to listen to some music. I'm not like advertising anything, by the way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Good luck with everything, as usual. Ah, uh, so close, I know, I know, I know. I love you though. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Um, like honestly, guys, the comments that I receive 